More on the metaverse, AR, VR, and what we really need. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter to keep you up on all the latest from Mac Voices. Watch or listen to Mac Voices straight from your email client. Sign up at macvoices.com slash newsletter and stay up to date. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is the third and final part of a catch-up Mac Voices live session that was broadcast last year. This time around, we finish up our conversation about the metaverse, AR, VR, what we have, and what we need. And we come up with a surprising conclusion. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. Brittany, you you were saying that in in the in our private chat that uh, your brother's involved in some of this and he pivoted from one to the other. Yes, yeah, so he has a, a company to help. Um, it was originally going to help architects, but then it turns out architecture firms didn't care. So um, they help uh, construction companies who do care about actual how hard it is to build stuff, um, and and they they help them envision the building in advance. And to help avoid problems, because you can't really visualize it, no matter how good you are at looking at those pages, the same as standing in it. And so his technology now, which is uh, Argyle, if somebody's interested, I think it's argyle.space. Um, and so rather than standing in it, when they pivoted to construction, they wanted people to be able to see the construction site while also um, being able to see the the future building. Um and now that they have their patent finished, I can talk about it more. Um, but uh, so their first time, they, they have a way to keep it. Construction sites are very messy. And so, and the constantly changing. So he invented, because my brother's that kind of guy, a technology so that it would have like consistent places so that when the construction site changed, the building would still look the same. Um, so you put, you put it on or put your phone up really, which is what you mostly do, but he does have a, what is he using? Leap? Something like that. Mm. Um, and not leap. It's something different, but I cannot remember the name. And you look around the building. Well, the first time you showed this to a construction company, they caught an error with their bathroom construction and it saved them $30,000. Nice. And so... It, I mean, if you don't have an error, obviously you're not going to see that thing, but you know, if you do, um, and so that's, that's the direction they're going now is, is visualizing, you know, the space as it's being built and, and keeping up with that. Okay. And forgive me, cause I, I don't want to sound like I'm argumentative. I'm not trying mm-hmm. to pick everybody's points apart, but that one sounds like a, a, a an honest to God, useful thing, but it's <laughs> not the collaboration. Um, it is not the collaboration, but it, it was a, it, That's why I said it in the chat. Instead of, it's not really about the collaboration. It was about, hey, he was going to do virtual reality because it is interesting to physically be inside a building before it is built. Um, but it is less pragmatic and justifiable inside a budget than the one that they pivoted to, which is right. more augmented reality. Yeah. And I mean, look, you know, we get hung up on the uh, where's the difference between augmented and virtual? No, I mean, who knows? You know, it but but I I I love the practicality of that. Um Brad says uh in the chat, Oculus question mark. And you know, I don't think we're necessarily talking about the hardware here, but I think we're talking more conceptually and use case. We can we can all get, you know, hung up on the hardware that we'll we have now and we will be required to use or have to use to do whatever's gonna happen in the in the future. But I think we're I, I just I think it's a fascinating topic. Um, if you, I mean, if it, I'm sure probably everybody here has read Snow Crash. If you haven't, you should by Neil Stevenson. That seems to be you know somewhere between that and Neuromancer by William Gibson seem to be where some of this started to to come from. And you know, and and I don't know if that's what Zuck has in his head or you know not. I mean, other than just the fact that he wants it to be Facebook or Facebook oriented or Meta oriented that that you engage in. So I let's see what Jeff, what Jeff, you're, well, there's a conversation going on in our private chat about, um, I guess, augmented reality with um, virtual labels, animated displays and that kind of thing between what Eric, Jeff and Mark, you guys are into this. 
Oh um, yeah, you you should be part of our conversation, Chuck. I don't know what you're doing here. Yeah, I'm well, just trying to host a show. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. So the the condensed version. Uh, Eric says he's looking forward to when uh, he can have uh, like an AR experience in a museum. I've been to a few exhibits where that's already a thing, and uh, you get to uh, to the exhibit or to the to a specific display in the exhibit. And there's QR codes, and you scan the code, and uh, now you're involved in a in an AR thing. And um, and there there was one that I went to where you scan the code at the beginning, and uh, <clears throat> and then as you travel through the whole exhibit. You have all the cool stuff that's happening there, which was an immersive exhibit, and then you have the AR element to go along with it, which really enhanced the the whole thing. And um, and then Mark he uh, he made a comment about um, about after that, then you get the uh, the whole remote museum exhibit experience um, that anyone in the world can attend. That's already a thing, and Google's doing that. And uh, and early in the pandemic, when we were all completely locked down, there was nowhere to go. We were all isolated. I was doing uh, museum tours with friends, and we, we'd pick different museums around the world, and we'd be on like a Zoom thing, and we would all be going through this museum together, looking at the exhibits in real time, and uh, talking with each other about what we're seeing in real time as if we were actually there. So that that was really cool. And uh, and there you go, Mark. You, you were forward-thinking without even realizing how forward-thinking you were. <laughs> well, I've seen things at museums. Yeah, yes, there are QR codes. And some you know, have things that you might be able to you know, tap into your iPhone. But it, that's uh, you have to be there and present for it. I, I was looking more for the latter things you're describing, where you know I'm here in San Jose, California. I like to visit the Prado Museum in Madrid. You know, yeah, I that's would, that's I, what I, I'm I talking do. about too. That's that's what we did, like going to see uh, the Frida Kahlo Museum. So um, where, where you know what app do you need? Is it just a plug-in for Zoom, or how is it? Yeah, you know, how, how would normal people uh, like me? Normal normal people would. Um, um, it's, you go through Google and actually I think you go through Google maps and for the museums where it's an option, then, uh, when you get to the museum and Google maps, then it'll switch the interface for you so that you can have the, the whole 3d view in the museum. And then we just, uh, did a screen share okay. through zoom and uh, and we let one person drive us, if you will, through the museum, and we were all talking about what we were seeing in real time. And there was pop ups um, that that would show information about uh, different items in the exhibits, and it was uh, it was really cool. That's really cool. We, we went we went and visited uh, Rome and looked at uh, at places in Rome doing that too. And uh, there were a few other museums. Yeah, we're just in Rome, but you know, I love the Prado Museum, and uh, you know, maybe next week, you know, I'll use as a background uh, you know, my favorite uh, you know, painting in that museum. Webb, um, I'm kind of curious. You and David and I work in the same industry and in, in, from different angles. It, do you do you two feel like there's anything missing in our current ability to communicate? Uh, I mean. That, that we are absolutely, there's a big hole there. I mean, I'm sure everything can be improved a little bit. Frankly, I think a lot of it could be improved with better training on some of the tools and, and so a few improved tools for the improvement, a few improvements on the tools themselves. But that said, is there is there anything that we just don't, can't accomplish at the moment? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, I was just thinking to, to uh, the where I work. Uh, we have a, a learning center, and they're doing a lot more AI uh, type of uh, of training. Instead of you having to be in a classroom, you actually could you know have the AI glasses and there and be there. Um, other thing too is when you're going into sessions now, they're coming up with helmet cams with with uh, the ability of being into a Teams uh, meeting and actually showing that 
where you are in that particular area of that they're, they're trying to show when they're doing such learning. So I, I, I'm seeing a lot of the, a lot of that type of change. It's slow, but I think there are, there, there is definitely some room where, where we could uh, do a much better job of, of coming up with uh, ways to, to utilize those types of technologies. Um, and we're, we've come a long way, but uh, I think we got some ways to go yet. Yeah. Web? Yeah, I, I just, I was just going to say, I think you said it earlier. I, I'm, I'm still waiting for that killer app for yeah. what we do. There are certain things that, yeah, I could see um, uh, some applications for, but in my working environment, I haven't seen the killer app yet. Um, you know, I, I, I look at, you know, when, when you say virtual reality and bear with me, it's going to sound silly, but, uh, I, I look at, um, flight simulators, not, not the type on the computer, but the real ones that pilots go in and train on. Okay. And they, they work in, in four dimensions that, you know, they, they got pitch and roll and yaw and all that kind of stuff that airplanes do. Mm-hmm. Um, and those simulators really work on that. And, I'm I'm that that would be impressive if they could figure out a way to to, to simulate that. Uh, I don't know how they're going to do it with that, you know, putting some implant in your brain to make you think that you're <laughs> rolling around. But um yeah, I, I'm just waiting for the killer app. I, I, I think it, it's somewhere between novelty and toy, but it does have some real good applications like like uh uh what mark and jeff said about about being able to visit a, a gallery um uh going to go see the uh, the the statue of david you know is uh um uh one of those things that that uh, is you know you can see a picture of it or you can see it in person but having this virtual reality or augmented reality thing could be kind of that interim thing so i there are some things i could see you know we're, we're not going to be using it for for claims for, for my world, a, a, a claim is very simple. You either have a heartbeat or you don't. That's it. So, um, um, okay. being in the yeah, <laughs> being in the life insurance business. So, you know. yeah. Okay. So if yeah, so if if I could build on that, uh, you know, web, um, uh, you know, one, you know, you know, thirty years ago, Silicon Graphics, and uh, uh, again, you know, a lot of these uh, you know systems are used for you know maybe initially for military applications, you know, or police applications, um, you know, back then there was, you know, it is really, you know, software firm that had, you know, things very quickly. You create, you know, uh, from a blueprint, you could create a model of inside a building, you, you know, put on, you know, well, it wasn't goggles. You'd go in a room and you'd have, uh, you know, screens and projectors. You had to do a walkthrough to get trained, you know, for, you know, a new hostile mission. I think now, obviously, the technology was so much could be so much better. Uh, you know, for for that. But I I think whoever it was said, you know, in the idea, someone questioned the idea of killer apps. Well, there's a lot of uh, industrial and military, you know, government apps that uh, you know they'll just stand on their own. Cost is not an issue. I think for a lot of us, uh, you know, normal civilians, it's going to be about what can it you know what can it add to our lives that is uh, not available elsewhere and web to your example of you know visiting the statue of david i've done that but the problem is you know, the museum is so darn crowded that you know it's yeah i've you know you, you, it's almost like a check in the box i saw it but you could imagine if you had a you know a really good you know virtual model you know with uh you know real you know honest god you know photographs and a 3d model of the statue that would be a, so much to, Superior, you know, experience for seeing and appreciating it. Uh, you know, we were in Rome uh, in uh, in October. You know, just going in, seeing the Sistine Chapel. You know, seeing, you know, being able to see and interact with that. You know, in an empty, albeit virtual space, would be so much better than you know, with people crowding around and somebody you know bumping into you. And uh, you know, so I think there's all sorts of ways that this could really improve on actual physical experience, but it's not these dumb ass ideas of, you know, oh, let me create an avatar that looks like, you know, a cartoon, you know, a sitting at a conference table, because that's all, you know, Zuckerberg can think of, you know, for trying to hype his vision of, uh, meta corporations, uh, metaverse, you know, so, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's going to be you know things that really add value to ordinary lives, 
you know, that is really going to make this stuff take off. I think we're now at a point where um, we clearly have enough, uh, you know, uh, telecom, you know, and wireless bandwidth, you know, that, uh, you know, it's it's feasible to be uh, using the devices, you know, driving along or walking down the street. So, you know, I think now it's going to be a question of uh, you know, creativity of app developers, as well as, you know, can Apple or whoever they're, whoever else is out there, can they actually create, you know, a device that you wear glasses, I wear glasses, Chuck wears glasses, Eric wears glasses, you know, where, you know, this device, you know, can adjust to our, you know, glass prescriptions and still present, you know, a screen, you know, with uh, all sorts of other computer generated graphic. Because if they can't do that, I think it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a strikeout. It's going to be a marginal product. You know, if, if they can do that, you know, next year or the year after, you know, because the Apple rumors keep changing, you know, the dream doesn't, but the actual rumors do. If they can do that, then I think they have you know, really, you know, a, a valuable hit on their hands. Yeah. Webb, um, you're, I, I love the, I love the part about your part of our industry. You know, if, it, if they either, either have a heartbeat or don't. Um, my side of the industry, I can see, you know, easier modeling of accident scenarios um, becoming very, very valuable. Um, right now you can do it, but it's a, it's a wildly expensive as opposed to being able to do it. Maybe, I mean, you, you do it in the case of multiple fatalities, but you don't do it in the case of fender benders. And it'd be really interesting to see how that could, you know, that could affect our industry. Brian in the chat room says, wonder if the killer app isn't as much an app, but the way the platform ecosystem integrates with what you already use. In other words, the Apple ecosystem. Um, I think that's a really, really interesting idea, Brian. But Brittany, I want to give you the last word because you you brought up something that I really hadn't thought about. I, and I, you may have just stopped my search for the killer app. <laughs> well, I, I was remembering that that's what people kept saying about the Apple Watch, but there really wasn't one. They added features and continue to add features. And, oh, right, the people aren't really using it for this. Things need to be quicker, more health metrics. And it's collectively valuable enough for many people to get until it's, you know, one of the most popular ones in the world. And so lots of people have them. It's much less niche. You know, my parents have them. Um, but but there was never a killer app. It just was pretty stable and pretty good. Yeah, that's I, I hadn't thought about it that way because you're right we were looking for a killer app for the watch and you can probably argue depending on your interest right any one of the any one of the capabilities is the killer app for you but it's the the value overall of the experience that is is really what does it so right like dave wanted his to charge faster and he upgraded last year and i am a sucker for a new health metric so i upgraded this year there you go. Sounds a lot like some of the conversation we had earlier about PDF, uh, <laughs> PDF and um, subscription software. And all. <laughs> Guys, thank you. This we're pretty much at time. Thank you. This has been uh, ev uh, everything. I hope the discussion would be in more um, because I didn't have an article to point to or uh, didn't want it to be argumentative. It's just, uh, just taking a look at what's coming and also what's being fed to us. And, you know, maybe maybe approach it with just a little more skeptical eye or a little bit different eye. Um, let's go around the room, let folks know where they can find you, and then we'll uh, head out of here. Um, and I think I'm going to switch switch it up this time, and I'm going to start with Webb down at the bottom of my screen. Webb, thanks for being here. Um, what's the best way for folks to connect with you and find out if you still have a heartbeat? Well, evidently, my chairman just found me because he's been texting me the last couple of minutes. So. Uh. <laughs> Um, uh, Web Bixby, one word I, at Twitter or Web Bixby, two words at Facebook. That's about it. So great. Thank you, Web. Tell your chairman we said hello. <laughs> yes, my brother. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that in that case, just give him a hard time for interrupting us. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Mr. Puccio, thank you very much for being here. Um, when you're not uh, hanging out in museums, where can folks find you? Oh, in the still existing uh, month plus after uh, Elon Musk acquired Twitter, 
tw- at Twitter at M A R K F U C C I O, and uh, we'll see. You know, there's other bridges, and I think there's some bridges, you know, some Mastodon. So maybe we'll need to experiment with some of those. But uh, for now, short and sweet at Mark Fuccio at Twitter, or same thing at LinkedIn. Great. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate it. The birthday girl herself, Brittany Smith, thank you so much for being here and sharing your birthday with us. Um, where can folks find you? Um, yeah, if you're on a Twitter and that's a thing, then ADD Liberator, that is also on YouTube where I've been doing more of the videos. Um, uh, the most recent episode of In Touch with iOS, Dave had me on. And that was great. Um, and I feel like I need to mention out loud, I said my brother's uh, website wrong. It's argyle.build because construction. Uh, and hanging out with tech okay. kids too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jim Ray has been very quiet tonight because I think he's building his next version of Panorama in virtual reality. <clears throat> <laughs> Actually, I, I've been quiet because my connection was really bad. Oh, really? Uh, and for about a half an hour, all of you were, f- I never knew Zoom would do this. Everyone was frozen except the person talking. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really weird and kind of unsettling. All the people not talking would be frozen in some sort of like, or, or whatever. <laughs> It's, it's our and, version of virtual but, reality, Jim. <laughs> it, it came back about five minutes ago, and and I was getting a lot of, you know, it was hard to follow the conversation because I was getting a lot of little weird noises and time jumps yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. So I was quiet. Um, so where can we find you? Um, well, you can find me at uh, proview dot com. P r o v u e dot com. And, you know, I feel kind of embarrassed, but you could still get a hold of me on Twitter for now at uh, ProView Gym. Okay. No reason to be embarrassed. Uh, I think there is. Oh, okay. Well, there is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever. Um, Jeff Gamer, are you embarrassed to be contacted on Twitter or do you prefer somewhere else? Um, it, it takes uh, quite a lot to embarrass me. Um, my, my, my position on Twitter right now mm-hmm. is that uh, every morning when I get up and look at my phone and Twitter is still functional, I'm like, oh, huh, yeah. okay. Huh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a uh, damn, it's a mess. <laughs> Anyhow, um, you can find me on uh, um, uh, all the socials as J Gamut. Um, so that would be like Instagram. If Twitter's functioning, sure. Um, Mastodon.social. That's, that's where I am there. Uh, I, I get around. Um, so let's see what shows here on Tuesdays with you. Um, and then on Thursdays, the big show, and then Thursday evenings, typically with Dave on In Touch with iOS. By the way, Dave, Brittany, last week's show was so much fun. I'm so glad we got to do a show together. Yeah. Wow. Um, then Friday's on the Mac show, and then also on the Context Machine, because Brand Chaffin and I have teamed up again, and uh, we'll be recording an episode later this week. And then other stuff. If you Google me, you can find me. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Coming to us live from Wakanda, um, Mr. Eric Bolden. Eric, thanks so much for being here. Uh, what's the best place for folks to find you? Well, this week, I'm uh, EA Bolden at mas.to <laughs> or EA Bolden at techhub.social as I'm playing with the Mastodons. The the EA Bolden at mas.to has got dog pictures because, you know, that's a fun way to test things. Okay. That works. Mm. That works. It's not free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, what, we'll have to get you to update us on your uh, Mastodon experiments. Maybe you can be a guide for some of us. Yeah. Uh, David Ginsburg, I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, where's the best place yes. for folks to connect with you? Yeah. 
You can find me at InTouch with iOS at InTouchIOS.com. Yes, please go listen and watch the latest episode with Brittany and Jeff. We had a blast. Uh, my YouTube channel is at YouTube.com slash InTouch with iOS. Um, I'm on Macedon at uh, Macedon at Cloud at DaveG65. Um, you can find me on the Mac Show on Fridays, Fridays and um, here, of course, and uh, Twitter, DaveG65 and Twitch with iOS. Thanks for having me. Thank you, David. I want to say thanks to the chat room. Uh, they were throwing some really interesting comments in tonight. We always appreciate you uh, being here and to all the folks watching live. It's always great to see you, even though uh, some of you are kind of quiet. I know you're out there watching. And so we really do appreciate it. And of course, if you are not able to join us at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are, um, these shows eventually show up in the Mac Voices feeds. We're a little, running a little bit behind, especially because of the holiday. So I'm playing a little bit of catch up with some of the old shows, but uh, a lot of most of them are kind of evergreen, or at least uh, they aren't out of date. So you know we release them, and hopefully you get something out of them. Until the next time, and as always, this is Mac Voices Live. We do this every Tuesday night. We'd love to have you join us in the YouTube chat room at youtube.com slash TV. And so set your favorite uh, voice assistant, whatever it is, or just scribble it down on a calendar somewhere and join us. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.